What's up riders? Old Man Ronan here. Welcome back to the channel. You know, I've been thinking about doing this video for a while, but I wasn't really sure if I should. Do it! Just do it! Okay, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> You know, one of the most uh, fun things that you can do when you're riding motorcycles in the wintertime is change batteries in your cameras. No! <laughs> God. I've had a dickens of a time. These, uh, these GoPro batteries do not like cold weather whatsoever. But what I want to talk about today is, uh, is this bike really, what I really think about, it, is it really as good as what people say it is? And uh, we'll start with the, with the obvious. This little guy here, and I say little guy because I really don't mean it that way. What I mean is this little engine. I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. Well, this is actually the same kind of thing. This, this little guy just, it does whatever you ask it to do, except for go over 70 miles an hour. But as far as under that speed limit, man, it does everything. It's a full framed motorcycle, guys. And I, I always get a kick out of seeing some of these YouTubers that never make, a, you know, they, they, they do a review on a motorcycle without ever riding it, or they'll get on it for 10 or 15 minutes and say, yes, I'm gonna make a full review. No, dude, that's not what you do. You gotta ride the bike. And that's one of the things I'm honored to uh, be working with Royal Enfield on this, uh, this particular motorcycle. They gave it to me for a very long time to uh, give you my honest, upfront opinions and uh, like I said being a full-size framed motorcycle with a little engine it, you really do feel comfortable <laughs> and I guess that's probably the number one thing I should talk about this thing is just a breeze and an ease to ride the uh, the seat is Considering it's a stock seat, and they do make a bunch of different uh, different type of seats for this, and if you guys go to the Royal Enfield website, you can see all those. But uh, yeah, they, they make a tremendous amount of different seats for it, touring seats and stuff like that. And uh, I'll tell you, I'm, I have obviously never ridden any of those. I've ridden the one that comes stock on it. And uh, the thing is amazing. Yeah, I turned off my turn signal again. What's up with that? And what I mean by amazing is, is it the most comfortable seat in the world? No, but for a stock seat, you know, you got to remember, I have a lot of Harley Davidsons, <laughs> and most of those are not that comfortable, particularly the Sportsters, man. They just, well, we have a saying uh, in my neck of the woods, they suck canal water, baby. Nice. <laughs> they really do. And that's why uh, there's such a huge aftermarket for uh, Harley Davidson, uh, um, you know, touring seats and other type of seats because they really are not that good. Uh, this one, on the other hand, I've ridden, I, I think the longest uh, Iron Lady and I have gone on a t dual trip on this was uh, several hundred miles. And uh, seriously, no problems whatsoever. And I think that's one of the things that I, I think most is attractive about this bike as far as the comfort uh, of the ride. And of course, the rider triangle is near perfect. Now, I wouldn't mind having the bars a little bit forward, but since it's not my bike, I'm not gonna adjust the bars for myself personally. So when you first jump on a bike, it, it's gotta fit you properly. I, uh, I love the way this bike makes me feel when I just sit on it and, and, and start to go for a ride. Now, like I mentioned earlier, I wouldn't mind the handlebars a little bit farther up, uh, and that would come just by loosening those floor bolts there and turning it up and then adjusting my controls up a little bit. But that's really a, a non-issue, if you ask me right now, because if I was riding this cross country, then I definitely would do it. But as far as the seat and the way that I'm sitting in the motorcycle, yeah, I mean, I really do like it. And the handling, that's another point. I think this bike handles really, really well. Now, is it a sport bike? No, uh, guys, come on. It's a 350cc motorcycle that's a cruiser style. So immediately you're gonna have the uh, foot pegs up a little farther than maybe you're used to. Like the new classic 350 they're coming out with has more mid controls. These are, I would call, 
forward mids. They're not really forward controls like I have on my Wide Glide or my Sportster. Uh, they're, they're not that. They're more mid forward so they do put your legs out a little forward you're not going to be standing up on this bike in other words it's going to be because you'd have to lean too far forward and you don't want to get yourself out of Killy Wampus if you know what I mean riding down the road so but as far as a uh, long time touring or as we say easy peasy ultralight touring bike the way that these foot pegs are sitting are pretty daggone good and the fact that I've got the wide pegs on them I call them mini floorboards that really makes a difference Guys, I tell you, riding in the winter and it's like 24 degrees, uh, the sun is now melting the, the frost off of the, off of the, uh, the uh, grass right now, but in the shaded areas it's still up there, but man, these cameras cannot stand the cold weather. I just had my front camera shut off and I'm going to see if I can get up here and around the corner and fix it. I'm not sure if I'll be able to or not, but if I can, I will. Let's see. We may be just doing a forward uh, video today. Because, man, yesterday I went out in the afternoon a little bit, and I didn't get any footage because of that. Let's, uh, let's pull over right here and see if we can't figure out what the heck's going on. Let's try this again. <laughs> I got a SIM card failure that time. Nope. I might just keep this stuff in. Trying to get show you guys how much crap I gotta go through to make a video for you. <laughs> oh Lord have mercy. Yeah, is this one on? Looks like it is, yeah. It's recording. Well, try this again. Well I know for a fact that uh we did get the front camera working this time. Wow. Tell you what guys. <laughs> It is what it is. And it died again. <laughs> well, you know what? We're going old school because uh, I, uh, I'm not trusting this camera right now. But anyway, to get back to my point, we talked about how uh, comfortable this bike is to ride. Uh, you know, we're going on some pretty bumpy roads right here, and uh, it's fairly smooth. And I say that, I still have it set for up for two people. And the, uh, the next video we're going to be doing on the Meteor is going to be a video based upon uh, how to set up for uh, one person, two person, or your different loads and stuff of that nature. So I, I think it'll be an interesting video, and that'll be coming up next. But uh, what I want to talk about today is, you know, what I really think about this bike. And, uh, you know, what is it really as good as what people say it is? And I'm telling you, this bike is super smooth, and it starts up each and every time. Uh, you know, I know a lot of guys uh, say they have issues with keeping their Himalayans running, and I don't know what the difference between it is. These en engines are very, very similar, but uh, I'm telling you, this engine there, this 350 engine, the, uh, the Himalayan engine should be modeled after it because, man, it is every time, no fail, immediate start, and it just keeps purring away. And the low-end torque on it, considering it's going to be geared a lot different than it is on the Himalayan, uh, this engine is awesome. I, uh, I, <laughs> you know, it, it, it's, it's kind of funny because you know, when you start talking about small CC engines, and you start talking about, you know, uh, what, what can they do? Well, this motorcycle engine can go 70 miles an hour with two people on it and not struggle at all. And it is, I mean, literally, well, you think about my 1250 uh, uh, Sportster that I have, it's a quarter of what the size of that is. Well, maybe just a shad over that. But, and it still does everything I want, to, want it to do in a motorcycle. It takes me on these back roads and takes me, uh, you know, uh, on the 55 to 65 mile an hour roads without an issue. Like, if you're, going, if you're living in the, uh, the greater Columbus area, there's a lot of roads and highways there that are 65, 55 and 65 mile an hour. This bike handles that perfectly. You get outside of town where it's 70 mile an hour, then it's going to struggle a little bit. And so, it, but as far as a city and a backcountry road motorcycle, this thing is amazing. And that's what I really truly think about it, guys. This is an amazing motorcycle for the amount of money you're spending, in the in the kind of uh, the kind of fit and finish that you're getting. Now, 
guys will notice that I just downshifted there because that is something that you have to be aware of in a smaller engine motorcycle. You do have to downshift. Uh, but you know, if you grew up riding on the dirt like I did, you have to downshift all the time anyway. It's constant, up and down, up and down, up and down. Uh, because you're, you know, back in those days, when I was riding a lot of dirt bikes, I had a, you know, what, a 125, a 100, a 125, a 250, a 390, all those engines that size. And, you know, you're running and you're trying to go up high hills and things. Well, there's no difference in, in really. I mean, you, but the difference is, is you can't go as fast on one of them as you can on one of these. And I think that's what uh, the, uh, the pleasure is with this motorcycle. It gives you the ability to, to really do some really cool ultralight touring, easy peasy cruising. With a, with a motorcycle that gives you, wow, they had a fire there. <laughs> that gives you a motorcycle that's getting 75, 85, 90 miles a gallon. I just filled up uh, yesterday and I had 87 miles a gallon. I went, uh, gee, many Christmas, close to 200 miles on two gallons of gas. That's just phenomenal. So, is it really as good as what people say it is? I'd say it's better. Hey, what's that going across there? What is that? What is that? You know, this is the last week for the Old Man Ronin Fall t-shirt giveaway. And if you don't tell me in a comment, first you gotta be a subscriber, but tell me in a comment and also send me an email, which is the most important part, because if you just say, hey, I saw that little guy go by at this particular point in time on your video, and you don't tell me how to get a hold of you, well, then I go to the next guy, because that happens sometimes. You have to send me an email, and that email address is oldmanronin at gmail.com. And if you do, you'll get a chance to win our last Old Man Ronin Fall T-Shirt Giveaway. And here's this week's winner. Well, I'll tell you what, guys. I was trying to give you a few ideas of what I really think of this motorcycle between the handling and the comfortability of the ride and the way it handles and especially this little engine that says it could. It, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. This little guy here just does exactly what you ask it to do and at a really cool price. Well if you enjoyed this video make sure you give us a big thumbs up, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell notification button, share and comment. You know I read all the comments and comment on as many as I possibly can. It's going to be a little shorter than average guys because uh, I got camera failures and I'm afraid that uh, I do have extra batteries along but this cold weather there's no guarantees. Until next time, ride safe and keep her on two wheels baby.